Hi, you're in the studio with Luke from GuitarIQ.com. In this video, we're checking out a really interesting tone enhancing unit for acoustic guitar. The guys over at LR Bags recently sent me their session pedal to check out. I've had it on my board for the last few weeks, testing it out and running it through its paces. So in today's video, I'm going to chat about what this pedal does. We're going to take a listen to what it sounds like. Uh, we're going to cover some of the general recommendations for setting up and using this pedal. And lastly, we're hopefully going to answer the question, is this something you should be looking to incorporate into your own guitar rig? So if you find this video helpful or interesting, please click on that like button to let me know. And with that, let's jump over to the workbench and take a look. Okay, so here we are looking at a little acoustic rig that I've recently finished putting together. And more specifically, we're zoomed in on this Session Pedal by LR Bags. If you're not familiar with this pedal, it's part of their Align series of pedals that they've come out with in the last few years. Uh, from memory, there's six pedals. There's a reverb, a delay, a chorus, an EQ, an active DI, and of course the session pedal, which is essentially a hybrid between a compressor pedal and a harmonic exciter. All of the pedals in the Align series carry the same kind of form factor and aesthetic as the session pedal here, which is very cool. You heard this pedal in action in the intro jam of this video, but I did have a few other effects engaged as well. So Right at the top of this video, I just wanted to do an A-B comparison of what this pedal sounds like by itself with nothing else engaged. So for those of you who care about such things, the signal chain is my Maiton acoustic guitar going straight into the pedal board. From the pedal board, I'm hitting my little acoustic amp here on the floor. And the feed that you're hearing is from the DI out on the back of the amp directly into the interface. The settings on the amp are set flat with a tiny bit of reverb and it sounds something like this. So hopefully from that you can get a bit of a sense of what this pedal is doing. When I did the walkthrough of this pedal board, the comment I made about the Session pedal was that it's one of those always on style pedals that you dial in, you switch on, and then after a few minutes of playing, you forget that it's there. And it's really only when you come to switch it off that you realize just how much it was doing because you lose some of the impact and excitement around the tone. So now that we've heard the pedal in action, let's just talk about some of the specific settings here, what they do, what they sound like, and some general recommendations. First up, we have on the top left this volume knob, which is fairly self-explanatory. It sets the output volume of the pedal. So in general, unless you're using this pedal as some kind of solo boost pedal for all of that acoustic shredding you've got planned, 
uh, then usually would set this pretty much at unity with the dry signal coming into it. And that leads us on to this input gain up here. This is actually quite an important setting for this pedal. The input gain determines how hard we're driving both the compression and saturation circuits. If the input is set too low, First of all, we're not gonna be optimizing the signal to noise ratio of the pedal, which means the pedal could be prone to some excess noise. And secondly, we're not gonna be driving the compression and saturation circuits in the way that they're designed to work. On the flip side of that, if we're feeding too much input gain into the pedal, then we're gonna be overdriving the compression and saturation circuits, which is gonna be prone to clipping and distortion and just an overall diminishment of the nice dynamic and headroom that this pedal has. So what's the best way to set the input gain? Well, this pedal really wants to see a consistent level coming from your guitar. So the general suggestion is to leave your pickup set to 100% and then to adjust or attenuate the input gain from here. Now, to help set this, LR bags have rather helpfully included this little clipping LED up the top here. So for general playing, that light should really be staying off. It's only when we hit those kind of hard transients that that light should be engaging. Okay, so we have our input gain set. We've got the volume set roughly to unity. Let's now switch off the compression and saturation circuits so we can experiment with some of the tones this pedal has to offer. Now, first up we have the compressor. Even though this is a simple one knob design, it's actually doing a number of more complex things under the hood. This compressor is actually a multi-band compressor, which means it's affecting different parts of the frequency spectrum differently. And this compressor is specifically optimized to really narrow in on some of the typically problematic frequencies we find with the acoustic guitar. So let's hear this in action. So as I'm kind of playing around with that, you can notice a couple of different things. First of all, the more I crank that up, the more it attenuates the overall volume of the pedal. So we need to bring in some makeup gain, which is how a compressor is designed to work. The second thing we notice is that unlike a garden variety type of compressor that we might use on electric guitar, this compression is incredibly subtle, even when we turn it up to its fullest, right? It's not killing the tone and squashing all of the dynamic out of our guitar like a electric guitar compressor might do. The other thing is that because this is a multi-band compressor and it's affecting different parts of the signal differently, as I turn it up, you can hear that the compression is really shaping the overall EQ of the sound. You can hear when the compressor was at zero, there's almost a bit of a, a low mid boxiness to my guitar, which is slowly dialed out the more I turn the compressor up, which adds a really nice shape to the guitar tone. Okay, let's leave the compression there and let's move to this saturation knob over here. Now, what do we mean by saturation? Again, 
If you're coming from the world of electric guitar, this might be a little bit different to what you might assume, okay? This doesn't mean gain or overdrive or distortion. In this context, saturation is talking about the type of coloration we might get from using analog outboard gear in the studio. So for example, when we're recording something like an acoustic guitar in the studio, it's not always desirable to get the absolute cleanest, most distortion-free signal possible, right? As producers and engineers, we often choose particular bits of outboard gear, so preamps, compressors, and EQs, for example, because of the sonic characteristics that they impart on the sound, just from the nature of the tubes or the transformers or the other parts of the analog circuitry that they're using. And this saturation knob effectively emulates a similar sound in this nice compact pedal board friendly format. So let's take a listen to what this is doing. So you can certainly hear the effect that that's having on the tone. In contrast to the compression side of this pedal, as we dial in the saturation, the overall volume's getting louder. So the way to set this pedal is kind of leave your input gain set to where it works with your guitar, and the rest is a bit of a balancing act between the amount of compression, saturation, and the overall makeup gain that you're gonna be adding depending on where those other settings are. In the first, say, 50% of the range on the saturation knob, it stays pretty subtle. And then once we wind it up, you know, past halfway, especially in the top sort of 70 or 80%, you can really hear that saturation starting to drive. And of course, we could drive that even further by really clipping the input gain if we so desired. With my rig, I like leaving this at about the 50% mark. It just adds a bit of low end and a nice overall thickness to the tone. So they are the sounds and settings of the Session Pedal by LR Bags. What do I think of this pedal and do I think this is something that you should put on your pedal board? Well, they're two different questions. Firstly, I think this is a fantastic little unit. It sounds really great, it looks really great, it feels like it's really well made. In my opinion, this is one of those always on, enhancing, juju adding, make goodera style pedals that I just love having on the pedal board. Is this the right pedal for you and your rig? Well, that's a different question and it really depends on what you're looking for. To me, this firmly falls in the camp of a tone enhancing pedal as opposed to a tone shaping pedal. And what I mean by that is, if you already like the sound of your acoustic guitar pickup or the sound you're getting from your acoustic guitar amp and you're looking to just enhance things further, then a pedal like this is gonna be a really good match in the context of what you're looking for. However, if you're fundamentally unhappy with the sound that you're getting from your guitar pickup, while the session pedal will pretty much enhance anything that you put into it, it doesn't have the dramatic tone shaping capabilities that something like a dedicated EQ or preamp that's specifically designed for acoustic instruments will have. And for me, having used this pedal in the context of this board with other effects and a dedicated preamp, that's really where this pedal shines, using it as an enhancement alongside a good preamp, whether it be the preamp on your guitar pickup, whether it be a dedicated preamp pedal, or simply the preamp on your acoustic guitar amplifier. For me, coupling a tone shaping pedal like that with a tone enhancing pedal like this session pedal makes for a great little acoustic rig. And the addition of a little bit of delay and reverb never hurts either. And that's my look at the session pedal, which is part of the Align series by LR Bags. 
Well, that's it for this video. Hopefully it was able to answer any questions you might've had about the session pedal. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, then please leave your feedback, thoughts, or any further questions in the comments section below. I've actually featured the session pedal in a number of other videos, including a full walkthrough of the entire acoustic rig that I've put together. So I will leave any applicable links to relevant videos in the description below. While you're checking them out, why don't you uh, subscribe to the channel for future updates just like this one. And last, but certainly not least, if you're interested in taking your playing ability to the next level and furthering that all important guitar knowledge, then please mosey on over to guitariq.com at your leisure to check out some of the great resources I have over there waiting for you. That's it from me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.